We will talk about Profibus DP, the centralized peripheral. We will show you example where you can use and where it can bring you benefit to your control system. It's a decentralized control system for special control cases that you have to share your control to different locations in distance. This example is a hotel in Bodrum city in Turkey that we have four chillers and every chiller has its dedicated control unit. We are going to refurbish these chillers by a new control system. Simultaneously we are going to provide visualization to the BMS. fully distributed control system consisting five CPU. Every CPU to control one chiller and also one CPU as a SOP to manage all of them providing visualization to our BMS. We can have a centralized control system for this hotel to control every chiller directly also providing visualization to our BMS but consider if you have a separate control panel here and you need to provide about 100 cable to every chiller imagine how much cable you should extend to this system to have such a centralized control another way is to use one CPU with uh, remote IO extensions in uh, this example I'm going to use ABB with protocol CS31 and your CPU can have visualization to your BMS. Cables are already provided to the control panel. You don't need to extend any cable. To use one CPU in four separated control panels. Here you can see this control structure. Here is my CPU. I'm using PM556. Here is CS31. Going to connect to my first remote I.O. It's connecting here and it's going for the next one. First one, the address is 1. I choose the next one, address 4, and the next one is 8. 10 meter distance, the next extension. So you see it's one controller distributed to four separate channels. Here's the last one. You put the bridge here for the last one. So now let's have a look on the structure on the automation builder. Just put your extensions in, in order here. As you see, if you put add object, it can show you objects you can add. You may just double click and it will be added. For your remote IOs, you just need to click on your COM1 and you choose protocol CS31. And this is how it will look like. Then you can just right click and add objects. It will show you a list of modules you may add here. These are modules supporting uh, CS31 and also each module also can accept again uh, modules here is my module in this example DC551 I added another module to my remote IO you may go to help to the content and you may print out something may help you about connections CS31 bus in this address will show you about isolating also CS31 bus connection show you if your remote IO is end extension or if it is in the middle how you're going to wire them you don't need to make much changes here just double click on them the address should be the same as what you set in your deep switch. The same thing for others, just 
the only thing is different is the address 4 and for here is 8 so here if I double click for code assist and if I power my system okay I give them time they come up it's early to go for online it need time to get ready okay I put the program I'm uploading the program and you see I'm not getting any message there is no error I'm running the system yes now it's running without any problem let's go and check colors of LEDs if there is any error no this is my first IO it's working here is my PLC CPU and the rest they all are working without error or any problem it means we have a correct setup now and everything is okay here is our structure It's rain. panels here and other two panels are here so let's go up this is the panel we remove the control unit that is the location all cables are prepared the suitable location to put our control unit so this is the place I put my remote I.O. So I'm going for the next panel. In this panel, we already installed CPU here. Let's go for the next. In this one, we didn't remove the control unit yet. And that one will be number four. The reason I put CPU here was because I wanted to have uh, less distance to my HMI. So as you see, it's giving us best access to the previous wiring for connecting. You see, I even used the same logo, the same labels for wires. Here yeah, also for digital outputs, for digital inputs and digital output are just coming to the relay. With having just uh, previous wiring, it helped us using the guide from our PLC connecting guide. We easily connect them. So in this case, there is no need to make a new wiring diagram. Now this one is my CPU and 
is the address for CPU D0 I0 D0 I1 and one of them I connect is this one D0 I1 for remote starting the circuit it's connected here from D0 I0 to 7 this column we can find it here X1 line 6 is what is shown here this is how you just connect the previous wiring to your PLC IO map We will go back to Istanbul. We are almost done the most important parts. We just couldn't do the startup. Maybe another time we may come back and finish startup.